Okay, these are two transfer fixtures, or commonly called a transfer jig. They're from Ultratech. The purpose of a transfer jig is to keep your gemstone aligned when you finish cutting or polishing one half of the gemstone and you want to start cutting or polishing the other half of the gemstone. There are many different transfer fixtures available. Each manufacturer of gem cutting machines has their own transfer fixture and many gem cutters have created their own fixtures over time. This transfer fixture, for example, was created by Bill Companion up in Ohio. Bill is on Facebook if you want to contact him about making a transfer fixture for you. Transfer fixtures are not cheap and as a new cutter, you could possibly get along without a transfer fixture, but not very well. I would highly recommend any beginning gem cutter invest in a good transfer fixture when you purchase your gem cutting machine. If you purchase a new machine, a transfer fixture will almost certainly be included in the packet of goodies that you get with your machine. I have and use uh, three transfer fixtures, but I could get by with just one and did for many years. Uh, again, for a new cutter who's on a budget, I would recommend you buy just one. So how do you use a transfer fixture? Here's how I use it. When I decide to cut a piece of gemstone rough, the first step for me is to grind a flat spot on the rough where I'm going to attach the dot. And if you're not familiar with DOPS, please watch this video that I made about DOPS um, as I explain all about DOPS. I generally use a 300-ish grit lap to grind uh, the flat stop spot on a piece of rough. Any lap will do, but in my opinion, using a rougher lap to make the flat spot helps the adhesive attached to the gemstone a little better than if you used a polished flat spot onto the stone. Okay, when I mount a gemstone onto a dop, the first thing I need to do is make a flat spot on the gemstone that the dop can adhere to. So I use a generally a pretty rough lap, rough diamond lap to do the, uh, to make a flat spot. In this case, it's a 320 grit diamond topper I'm using. And I just grind a bit to get a flat spot. Okay, so that's what I'll use to um, adhere my dot to either with a uh, two-part epoxy or super glue. And generally for me, when it's a bigger stone, I use two-part epoxy. If it's a really small stone, I use super glue. So I'll, I'll use uh, two-part epoxy for this stone. And I use the rough lap because that will make pretty big scratches, which helps the adhesive stick to the stone. Then I select three dops. One is a flat dop that I'm going to attach to the rough so that I can cut and polish the first half of the gemstone. The second dop can be flat, cone-shaped, or V-shaped, depending on the shape of the bottom half of the rough, uh, the side that you did not grind flat. I set a piece of modeling clay on top of this bottom dop and push the gemstone into the modeling clay because the bottom part is not flat. The modeling clay helps to hold the gemstone slightly. It kind of molds itself around the gemstone and it still allows me to adjust the piece of rough so that I can set the top dop exactly where I need it before I use the adhesive. The third dop is either a flat or a cone-shaped dop. It doesn't matter which, but I want it to be almost as big as the gemstone I am going to cut. I use the stop on top of the gemstone to get the stone centered in the fixture. Uh, having an oversized dop really helps to center the rough. In addition to centering the rough, I also need to make any adjustments for any inclusions or fractures in the stone that I want to cut out. When I have the stone aligned exactly where I want it, I remove this third oversized dop and replace it with the first dop, which is what I'm going to attach to the gemstone. And just a good rule of thumb that I've learned is this. After selecting that first dop that you intend to use to cut your gemstone, go back dop tray and change it out for the next smaller size. I can't tell you how many times I start cutting only to encounter an inclusion or fracture or some other issue and have to make the stone smaller than I planned as I work through that issue. Only to find that I have cut all the way down to the dop and I have to redop the stone with a smaller dop to continue on uh, just to get an internally flawless gemstone. So uh, as a general rule try to remember 
to change to a one size smaller than you thought you would need for the dock. Okay, so I'm gonna mount the uh, color change garnet in, onto the dock. So what I do first is I get my kind of putty and I make a kind of a pancake and I grab a flat dock for the bottom that's uh, bigger or as big as the stone and I put the uh, putty on top, make sure that's tight. And that's because the bottom half of the stone has is is rough. It's got you know various shapes, so it'll go into the putty and, and um, help make it flat. Because the top flat part is what we want to put onto the dock. So the top dock, right? Initially, I use a uh, dock that's about as big as the stone. It's not the one we're going to glue it to but to set it up and find center so we have less waste, I'm gonna use this, um, in this case, it's a five millimeter dot flat. So we bring the dot down on the top and then because it's a, a lar as large as a stone, it's fairly easy to figure out where you want the stone centered It looks to me like that's going to be centered a little bit more this way. And you just use, you know, your eyeballing experience. Then you gently kind of push the putty up a little bit so it holds the stone a little bit in place. Make sure that's where you want it. And then you change out to the actual dop that you're going to use, which is much smaller. This one, this five millimeter dop would not work. I'd be, I'd end up, as I grind the stone, I'd end up grinding into the dop. So I need a, a smaller dop. So I have a two millimeter dop that I'm gonna use for the stone. So I put that in the top of our transfer jig and push it down and now stone centered would be hard it would be harder to center it this way if i'd started this way because there's so much stone hanging out on each end it'd be it'd be a little more difficult so that little trick helps have a lot less waste there are three ways to attach the gemstone to the rough wax which i have not mastered and do not use and won't cover here two-part epoxy and super glue. Actually, okay, it's called cyanoacrylate, or just CA for short, but hey, let's just call it super glue. And for super glue, I use Loctite 404. As a very general rule, I use super glue for smaller stones, about six millimeters or less, and two-part epoxy for larger stones. And when I transfer to cut the second half of the general, to gemstone. Generally, I use super glue for a cone-shaped dot and two-part epoxy for a V-shaped dot. And again, two-part epoxy if the stone is large. The Altertech machines use key dots. These are dots cut at a 45 degree angle so that they go into the quill of the Altertech machine one way. Now, this ensures that if you have to remove a stone you're working on, to cut another stone, such as for a rush job. When you return the original stone to the quill, it fits back almost exactly where it was. Okay, so not only does the key dot feature of Ultratech allow you to remove a stone and put another one in there into the Ultratech, you know, and then later when you come back to this stone, uh, put it in and it goes right back in the same place, exactly where you took it out of. But also when you transfer and you use your transfer fixture, if you're using an Altertech transfer fi fixture, they're set up so that the key dot it slides right in and it slides under, slightly under the handle there. And what that does is when you are transferring to another key dot, in this case a flat dot to a cone shaped the cone shaped also fits right under the 
handle there so that when you're done gluing the two the new dob on it's already perfectly aligned because of the key dot feature and the other thing I do when I use my cone shaped dots is I put a small tiny bit of modeling clay in the very bottom just to protect the very tip of the stone if I have a culet which would be why I'd be using a round uh, dot a cone shaped dot so that when I and later removing the finished stone from the dop, the I don't have any re right, greatly reduced. I've never had the the culet, the very pointy end of the stone break because of the, when I'm using the modeling clay. So if something is you know the glue is stuck pretty tight and I put pressure on the stone, if the glue is too gluing the brass dop to the culet, the culet could break. But in the case when the glue is gluing the stone to the modeling clay the modeling clay will give and i won't lose a culet okay to transfer our stone the first thing i do is uh, get a paper towel and some denatured alcohol and clean the dop it's already been cleaned i keep my dops you know, clean before i put them away but just wipe it with the uh, denatured alcohol and the stone to make sure there's no leftover residual uh, swore for anything on the stone that'll affect the adhesion. Then I get a small bit of modeling clay uh, when I'm working with a stone that has a culet and I'm transferring it to a dop that's a cone dop. And I take a little bit of that modeling clay and I put it in the very bottom of the cone dop so that the very bottom doesn't have any brass. So the adhesive that I'm going to use is going to uh, adhere to this modeling clay and my culet and uh, the rest of the and adhesive that I use is going to uh, adhere to the stone and the brass dop, but not on the culet. So that way when I take the dop off, I don't bear any risk of the culet breaking. Now to transfer this stone, I'm going to use two-part epoxy, and I'm currently using the Debcon two-part epoxy, which works great. I don't have any complaints with it. I had been using uh, JB Weld for several years, and it's readily available in Home Depot, so product also worked great. When this dries, it, it's still a little bit malleable, which was fine by me. It, in fact, it helped me remove the adhesive pretty easily, whereas the DevCon uh, sets up like a rock and, and there's no uh, bend of the plastic. Wasn't a problem, but some cutters said they thought the, dev, the JB Weld might cause the stone to move or something when you're cutting it, which would be a disaster. Never happened, never had the problem. But I did decide to try the DevCon product and it works great. It uh, sets up hard as a rock. So the next step is to take uh, the two-part epoxy. I use a old business card because I have a lot of them. You can use anything. Some people use a credit card, a lid anything you want and you just want to put out a 50-50 mix. Just eyeball it and uh, get it pretty much right. If you put too much down you can scrape a little bit off before you start mixing it. But when you've got two puddles that look about the same you've got a 50-50 mix. Now if that one on the right looks a little big you could just take a little off. It's not going to cause a problem anyway but you could remove a little bit and then call it a 50-50 mix. So then you uh, mix the two part epoxy, the hardener and the resin together. And when you do that, you have a, about two minutes to put it onto the stone where you want it before it starts setting up. 
Um, don't worry about bubbles or anything. Not, none of that's a problem. There's no issues. So once you've got it mixed up, you want to put it on your stone and the dot. So once I use two-part epoxy to attach my dot to the first half of the gemstone rough that I'm going to cut, I generally let the stone sit overnight to allow the epoxy to fully cure. However, I recently learned that you can simply put your gemstone and dot attached to the two-part epoxy into the oven. Set it to bake at 200 degrees, turn the oven off when it reaches 200 degrees, and let it cool down on its own. After it cools down in about an hour, the epoxy is cured, dry, hard, not sticky, and you can use it right away. Another gem faster informed me that he was told by a chemist about 20 years ago that it actually only takes 20 minutes at 220 degrees in the oven for two-part epoxy to fully cure. So give it a try if you are in a hurry to start cutting on a gemstone. A couple of very good cutters have told me that what they do is they put the uh, stone in the oven and uh, that helps set the uh, epoxy in just a matter of hours. So what they do is they bake 200 Put the stone in the oven, close it up, and when it hits 200, what they tell me they do is turn it off and let it leave everything in there as it, the oven cools back down to room temperature. Okay, our oven has reached uh, 200 degrees, so we will cancel and let it cool back down on its own. Okay, let's see how our science experiment worked. So, it's not sticky at all, it's hard. Normally, after an hour, it's still sticky. So, it did uh, harden up right away. To remove the first off, I wrapped the gemstone in a wet piece of paper towel and apply heat to the first stop until the dot falls off. After polishing the second half of the gemstone, if I use super glue, I put the dot and gemstone into a pill bottle with acetone overnight. The next day, the stone is almost always separated from the dot. I used super glue, uh, Loctite, the Loctite 404. So I'm going to take the stone off the dop using acetone and I've always had a problem figuring out the right container to put the acetone in it. I usually use like an old jelly or jam jar but there always seems to be you know that the lid gets a little bit I guess the acetone needs to do something in the lid the plastic and it then it starts evaporating. So what I've Somebody told me, and I can't remember who it was. I don't know, I apologize. One of the better cutters than me, where I get all my good ideas from other people, said to use a pill, pill box, pill bottle. And so I put some acetone in here thinking, no, acetone's gonna chew right through this plastic. So it's been in there for weeks, weeks. And it didn't chew through the plastic. So all I can figure is our wonderful Congress probably spent millions and millions of dollars designing the right material to put in a pill box so that the pills don't mix with the plastic or something. I don't know. Anyway, acetone doesn't eat through the plastic pill box. So, and, so when you put the stone in there, first off, you're not putting it in a glass. That's a good thing. It's not going to bounce off the glass. And you're just putting the head in and the rest is not in the acetone, unless you want it to be, then you just put more acetone in your, your pill jar. So anyway, this is the latest new technique that I'm testing out. This will be the first time I've tried it with a stone, um, but I think it's gonna work. And I think it's better than a jelly jar or a jam jar. It is for me, because it's not glass. It's not, the stone's not bouncing against glass, and the acetone doesn't evaporate 
through the pillbox. I, I know because it's, like I said, it's been sitting in there for weeks. So here we go with this test. Okay, and the next morning our stone is off the top. If you use two-part epoxy, you have an option. You can remove the stone with acetone the same way as you did with super glue. Uh, but for two-part epoxy, you can also boil the gemstone and dock to remove the epoxy. You do need to know if your gemstone uh, can take being boiled. I put a piece of paper towel into the water to prevent the bubbling water from bouncing the stone around in the pan. Uh, this doesn't work with super glue, just two-part epoxy. Then I weigh my stone, measure it, and send the finished gemstone off to Bopi as it is done. Thanks in part to the transfer fixture. So in this video, I've shown you how I use a transfer fixture. I've discussed the adhesives, including wax, super glue, two-part epoxy, to attach your gemstone to the dot. Shown you how to use the transfer jig to attach the second dot to the stone to facet the second half of the gemstone. And how to remove the adhesive after transferring the gemstone and after polishing the gemstone. I hope you found this video useful. And as always, happy fastening, everyone.